Hello and welcome to Discovering Gray's Lake, unveiling the stories and people that make our town so unique. I'm your host, David Wool, and I'm thrilled to bring you this new podcast that explores fascinating stories and experiences of local business owners and community leaders right here where we call home. Gray's Lake Rehabilitation Center is a community-based private practice physical therapy provider. Do you know they have 13 clinical providers with various levels of specialties, including orthopedics, sports, neurology, vestibular, geriatrics, pelvic floor, and aquatic? What? Did I just say they have a pool? Well, they do, and it's the largest indoor warm water pool in Lake County, featuring two underwater treadmills and swim currents, and recently added clinical treatment specialties, in layman's terms, shockwave. They have both radial and focus units that are the newest tool in regenerative medicine, available to everyone. They pride themselves on the most current and up-to-date specialized care to keep you moving. If you're looking for physical therapy, make sure to see our friends at Grays Lake Rehabilitation. Wait, 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 wait. Grays Lake has a record store? Are you ready to get into the groove? Well, I've got the perfect place for you with new and used vinyl, CDs, tapes, and more. At Andy's Records, they're not just about the hits. They're about the classics, the B-sides, the hidden gems, the vinyl vibes that make your heart skip a beat. For the record, Andy's is not your average music shop. It's a place where melodies meet memories. Andy's Records, because life sounds better with a little spin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Discovering Gray's Lake. Um, today, I am down at the end of Center... Is this the end or the beginning of Center Street? Well, I like to think of it the beginning, obviously. The be- we're at the beginning of Center Street, and I'm at the Loop Marketing with Elijah Lichter. How are you, Elijah? Yeah, I'm great. Yeah, it's Litcher. Yeah. Litcher. So, yep. Sorry. Mm-hmm. See, we, we always start off great. Well, you know what? Um, it's not uncommon. You know, I like <laughs> to answer the phone to telemarketers several times a day with that uh, uh, same uh, note. So, yeah, no, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is it Eli or do, or do I have to do Elijah? Do I have to be formal? Oh, uh, no, Eli's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, so, funny that I've been here for so long and then you and I hooked up to get <laughs> to meet each other. Right. Um, how, how did that even happen? Um, yeah, I don't know. Mutual um, friends or something. Uh, like yeah, maybe. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, um, you're just, you know, obviously you're a legend in the town. And oh yes, yes. I mean, it was, re- it was really Wentworth. nervous to approach you at first. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you, they always say be careful when you meet your idols. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So the bullshit <laughs> part, portion of the show is done. <laughs> All right, so um, let's let's start and just give everybody. Um, uh, kind of a, just a simple overview of what you do here yeah. down at the beginning of Center Street. Right, yeah. So um, uh, this is one of our offices. So I'm the founder and the chief digital strategist at The Loop Marketing. And uh, so I've been doing digital marketing for since t- uh, 2009, owning my own business. But I've been in I've, since uh, Yahoo is bigger than Google. So in the year 2000 is when I, I started in the industry. And uh, so I've seen a lot over those years. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, we're, we're – over the last 10 years, um, we're seeing some of the biggest changes in the next year in digital marketing that will affect anybody that's doing – any every business it will actually affect, but um, anybody that's actually doing digital marketing. So it's exciting. Um, I love it. Um, we have a, a small team. We have an office – a small office downtown. I have employees in Chicago. I actually moved to Grays Lake from Chicago about uh, 10 years ago with my – with my family, or I, with my wife then, but uh, we've grown a family in Grays Lake, and we love it here. So, um, yeah, our office is uh, at uh, 10 North Lake, and um, there are a couple days a week. But, um, uh, yeah, we, um, um, we're, we're, we're having a good time working with, uh, you know, clients all over uh, Chicago area, Grays Lake, and, and all over. Uh, so we have some, a lot of them in all across the U.S. So. Uh, so you work downtown for a long time? Yes, okay. yes. So how in the hell do you make it out to this lovely town? <laughs> well, um, I think I could put that in. So last week I was going to, uh, I was going to our office down there to meet with my project manager, and I, uh, I left at 7 o'clock in the morning to try to beat traffic. Uh-huh. And, uh, How'd that work out for well, you? Well, I, I, it took me an hour and a half to get to Addison, um, and I sat there um, and did the New York Times crossword puzzle for 30 minutes, <laughs> and my map said it was going to take me another hour and a half to get to the office, so I just turned around and came home because I looked in the other direction, and uh, and the traffic was just as bad. So uh, I just ab- uh, aborted it right then. And uh, no, I mean, I take the train most of the time. That was just because I, I wanted to manage what time I can leave, but, uh, you know, 
um, with kids and everything. This there is not a better community that I've I, I could possibly ask for than Gray's Lake. We live in the heritage district, district downtown. We take advantage of everything that Gray's Lake has to offer. Um, you know, I couldn't even imagine it a different way. So right. now, where did you grow up at then? So I grew up in Iowa, um, in the Quad Cities, which is a metro area of Iowa. You know, so I wasn't like you know in a cornfield or anything like that. Um, <laughs> right. But um, but they, I was cornfield adjacent. Oh, all right, that's good. I think that's the name of a band uh, that if I used to play drums for. <laughs> right, I used to play for drums for cornfield yeah. adjacent. Uh-huh. Um, but so living in Iowa, then mm-hmm. obviously you go to school. So how do you how do you find Gray's Lake? Like, was do you have relatives here? <laughs> well, actually, that's a funny story. So it's a, uh, you know, um, we uh, we lived in the city, uh, my wife and I, and she was pregnant, and we, you know, uh, I lived right in the heart of, um, you know, Lakeview East and Link- in Lincoln Park for forever. That was my stomping grounds when I was single, and then I met my wife, and then we got married, and then uh, we moved to Albany Park um, to to find a bigger space to, you know, when once our our first LJ was born, and. Uh, it got a little shooty over there, and uh, you know there was a couple, uh, one one particular instance. Um, so it was there was lots of, you know, we'd we'd go on walks, and there would be like memorials like laying out, you know, of the, oh somebody got shot dead here, and then there would be another block, and somebody we were right on a gang border apparently. Oh, nice. Not not super great for raising kids. In. No gang border adjacent. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless you want them. To to be in the gang, but then you have to sure. pick. And it's who a wants to have community. to pick the gang? I mean, right. that's, yeah. you know. I look I mean, better in blue. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> I, we I, digress. Sorry. Yes, right. <laughs> so, um, so one day, I, you know, I, I kind of wanted to stay in the city. Part of me did, but, I, you know, it was a beautiful uh, it was like that first day of summer where the weather was nice and it was a Friday and I took my wife out on a walk, you know, with our, with our new baby, you know, and, and I was like, look at, and we saw, you know, kids playing and, you know, we saw, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, a bunch of people sitting on porch talking just, I mean, it was just like a beautiful day and we rounded a corner right around our neighborhood and there was about seven police cars and police tape around a McDonald's and a dead body in a car there. And uh, I lost the battle, uh, but won. You know, we we both I think won the war about uh, what we wanted to do. We, yeah. we then one of our friends lived in Gray's Lake. And we came up to visit and just I mean immediately fell in love with it. Moved here. Um, and then interestingly enough, we never talked to him and he moved away for a work. So <laughs> really, so shout out to him. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But of all the communities, I mean, like again, there's it's just something special about living here. Um, that you know, there's uh, there's just nothing like it. Are you looking for a great time right in the heart of our awesome community? Well, look no further than the Grays Lake Village Center, your one-stop destination for all things fun and fabulous. Picture this. Historical downtown vibes with a mix of diverse businesses, an array of unique shops, and delicious restaurants. Many with outdoor seating, with an option to soak up the sun or shade. But that's not all. The Village Center is where the action is. And just like the weather, it's definitely heating up. There are events that take place all year round for the whole family. But now, you'll even have more options. Fill up your calendar with things to do. Also, take a stroll through Central Park, Gelatin Park, surrounding trails, green spaces, and more activities to keep you and your friends and family active all summer long. And now that the weather is warming up, dive into the Aquatic Center. Open Memorial Day to Labor Day. But wait, there is more. Visit GraysLakeVillageCenter.com to discover an incredible lineup of events that are happening every month. Be in the know. Not sure what you're waiting for, so come on down. Soak up the local vibes and enjoy the experience that's unmistakably local and uniquely Grays Lake. Grays Lake Village Center, where the fun never stops. Yeah, so it's nice because it's a lot, it's a lot different from Chicago. Very different, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. now you kind the of the buildings are shorter. Mainly. The buildings are shorter. Yes, yep. yes. That's a big. Thing. We we almost have as many bars on a block. <laughs> that well, is true, actually. Yes, that's same true. kind of feel. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you were like growing up, did you? When did you get like? Because I find your business fascinating. Because I thought I knew a lot about digital marketing. And I met you, and I'm an infant now. Um, <laughs> but when did you get involved? And like, when did that strike your interest? Um, well, I've always kind of been um, in part. Uh, you know, so when I started my career, actually, I started out um, working for. Uh, so again, put yourself in the year 2000. You know, after Y2K, and we were all miraculously saved. Um, you know, right after that, I was uh, I was working for the Yellow Pages, right? So if you think about what the Yellow Pages is, it, it there was no digital marketing. I mean, very little at that point. The Yellow Pages, is, I mean. 
kids these days, right? They won't ever realize the the pain of having to flip through the white or yellow pages to find. I mean, there was ads and everything. So in that year, 2000, the yellow pages was starting to branch off into a digital product. And if you think about it, they had the perfect opportunity. They knew all of the businesses. They could have put an online portal and they could have called it anything except Google did it next. And they just, there was so much profit in the print product at that time. None of the salespeople wanted to sell some weird digital thing they didn't understand. Businesses didn't get it. They didn't think this internet thing was going to take off, right? And so, you know, um, it was Yahoo, right? It was to click the link and then click the community and then everything. And then Google came along and we all know how that uh, ended up. But um, at that point, I was working, I started my career working with trying to get the digital part of the Yellow Pages uh, off the ground. And so, um, you know, after that, my career uh, uh, um, uh, evolved into working for, um, I worked for uh, a pretty large company that uh, did uh, online recruiting. Um, I actually served a stint in the Peace Corps. Um, I was uh, in a in the South Pacific uh, in between, just you know. Holy cow! Yeah, trying to fulfill my you know my wild urge to uh, to do good and to travel. And uh, I caught cholera and I lost 15 pounds in two days and uh, was uh, <laughs> wow. was invited to go back home. Uh, but uh, it was a great experience. So you got to travel a lot then. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. They don't have there's there was no digital marketing in uh, in the South Pacific. There Probably was not. not. No, right. no, or no. yellow pages maybe. Uh, there was actual yellow pages, but not in the way that you think. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, yeah, no, it was uh, it was very very interesting there, um, and that's probably a whole other story. But you know, I got into. Um, when I came back, I got into a company that uh, some people may know called Network Solutions, and um, I, I started – that was really when Google was starting to take off, and we're talking about 2000. I mean, taking off was – you know, they were really starting to gain that market share in 2007, 2008. Up until that point, it was kind of like, you know, Yahoo and and, uh, and MSN and, and Google kind of all had – Kind of some uh, some market share, but right about then Google really took off. So I worked for that company, traveling around the United States and speaking to businesses um, about digital marketing. Um, I, I know I, I I put a conservative estimate at probably 5,000 businesses that I talked to in the time that I was traveling around the country, and it was awesome. I mean, I got to sit and listen. You know, I'd, I'd speak on what we had to speak about in front of a room of a hundred people. I loved it, you know, every single time, every right. single time, no matter what, um, I Fun. would get up and I would love, uh, just talking, but also afterwards listening, right. Um, you'd have businesses coming up and, and they, uh, they would ask the best questions and they would, you know, this is what my concerns are and how do I do this? You know, and I just got, um, I, I, I loved just being able to interact and finding out what their concerns are. And I really had a great pulse on where, you know, what small business was going through. And then one uh, weekend, um, I was at Bonnaroo and I was driving home and where we were staying at a hotel on the way home. I woke up and my phone was blowing up because somebody had bought our company and they had uh, unceremoniously in one day laid off the entire uh, business education and uh, team. So, wow. Yeah. So um, at that point, I, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, there was another uh, person that I'd worked with. We talked and we said, you know, we, we, we know all these businesses. Like, what about this guy at this? There was no non-compete or anything. What about this guy we talked to? What about this guy that we talked to at this event? You know, right. so we started making some calls and sure enough, they said, yeah, we want to work with you. I mean, you just told us everything we needed to do. Let's do it, you know. And so it was um, it was kind of an unconventional entrepreneurial route, but um, – you know, we uh, and then my partner. Uh, it's it. You know, as most small business people know, it's not the right life for everybody, right? Correct. Um, especially when you're starting out, there's a lot of uncertainty. And um, and he was starting a family himself, so he kind of said, you know, I'm going to take another position. And you know, at that point, I I ran with it, and um, uh, and here we are. So that was in 2009, and I've been uh, running the marketing since. Wow. So you got to see everything from the inception of how things used to be done, and you kind of really have to have an open mind and, and know what's going on, have your kind of finger on the pulse, so yeah. to say, of, of how things are going to go. Yeah. And, you know, it, it half of what I do, well, not half of what I do, but a lot is just keeping pulse with the industry. It it changes so, so, so much that and, – and now, like I said, I think I mentioned – there's more, there's been more changes and there will be more changes in this next year than there has been in the last 10 years. It is a time of absolute 
um, um, upheaval in everything that we do. I mean, and, you know, and I could go one by one, but, you know, our services basically, you know, like email marketing is one. Email marketing is great, but, you know, as of beginning of this year, you had to do a, make a small technical change or else you ended up in spam. And I feel very bad because a lot of business – I wish I could go – and, and and for free, go and tell every business. All you have to do is this. It's 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 a little technical, but it's easy. And just do that. But a lot of people don't do it. And now people aren't getting their emails, right? right. Um, Google is probably um, if uh, maybe people have noticed, but Google is serving the worst search results they probably ever have right now. And and uh, Gen Z is turning to TikTok to ask their questions now instead of Google. Interesting. And that is where and you know Google's coming up with AI, but it's not good. But they're under pressure to do it. And there's you know uh, there's a whole other story there. So all of these things are changing so quickly. Um, so even what we're doing day to day. But you know our clients rely on us to to figure that out. And our clients, we love them. Most of our clients have been with us for I mean four, five, six years. It's what's awesome. This, what's like the size of the clients you use the most? Small businesses. Small businesses for sure. Um, basically. Um, they're uh, they're probably big enough to need to have some kind of you know if they ha- if they're looking for new clients they're gr- they've grown enough where they can handle new clients um, but they're not big enough to you know to hire a marketing team right um, so you know businesses hire us rather than hiring maybe like one marketing person because my team has a vast knowledge of all the different di- digital marketing so you know uh, for you know for what it would be to hire one person you get a whole team. Right. And, uh, and, and they, you know, we all stay up to date on everything. We're accountable. And that's, um, that, that's right where our sweet spot is. So you're not serving just, uh, like Chicago clients, you're serving local clients as well, because I know mm-hmm. a lot of the people that we've a either featured on the show or, you know, just looking and driving downtown, like yeah. er, every small business needs your service. So you're actually, in a, it, and that's a good spot to be. It is. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is I, um, uh, it, one of the differences about working in, in a metro area like Chicago, there is, you know, um, it, in, 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 and, and it's it's a blessing and a curse from from living here. But you know what I've seen is that you know you go to you look up a menu at a restaurant here and there's PDFs online, right? Yes. Um, you go and um, but but what's what's happened is there's been like a, a te- technological detente, you know, and it's just because nobody's willing to everybody's uh, digital pre- presence is probably exists, but it's not great. They have the website from you know, um, five or six years ago, and they don't see any reason to change because their competitors haven't changed. And there's really, you know, they get found by maybe word of mouth. But, um, but, you know, there's the businesses that are looking that have the killer instinct. We're taking a quick break just to say hello, because everybody knows Nano. And Nano knows real estate. And actually, I believe that's the name of her Instagram page. So if you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, or know somebody in the market for a home, contact Nano from Baird & Warner. She's a Grays Lake girl helping out Grays Lake people. And those are the ones up here that I love. In Chicago, we there it's a it's a it's a it's warfare. Like you know, everybody has to be better because everybody has a digital team working um, doing one thing or another. But um, but you know. Because businesses here probably have that on the back burner, um, there, there's an opportunity for them, but also there's a warning because if their competitors do, you know, I mean, if I work right. with your competitor, be careful because, <laughs> right. and, and I mean that in a good way, but you know, right. but it's not just me. You know, I think that you know, the whole digital marketing industry is 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 you know, it's becoming more sophisticated. It's becoming more knowledge based, um, and uh, and there's there's awesome tools that we can use now um and then ai is going to come and we'll have to learn everything over again but you know and i i welcome our ai overlords yeah personally yeah i always i I just want to make sure they hear that you know just in case well this is going to be on the interwebs exactly probably going to know everything about this conversation Mm -hmm. anyway yeah i you know if you plug me into the matrix please give me a good spot because you know i like a view Right. That's all. That's all I ask. That's that's fine. I I hope so too. Somewhere mm-hmm. I can walk to. It'd be nice. Right. I mean, yes. I mean, come on. Yes. Right. Um, I find that um, because I surround myself and most of my friends run small businesses mm-hmm. or a lot of the owners of businesses in town, and I love when people say, "Well, well, we don't we don't have time to do that," and I'm sure somebody can. Well, you don't you you can't afford not to do it. Yeah. Right? Especially because if you're, but if you're comfortable where you're at and you're not looking for new clients, then they might be just fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure even if they're not looking just to improve with the way that maybe you see things going, that you have to stay on top of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, should ever should every business have a TikTok channel? No, 
No. Definitely not. No. no. Um, I don't think so. I, I think that it's all, uh, you know, uh, TikTok specifically, um, uh, first of all, they say they're going to ban it, right? I don't really believe that it's too big to yeah. not get bought or go into perpetuity. Plus, it's also, because of what's what we're seeing, it's also extremely valuable. So there's just not any way that somebody's going to pass up buying it, right, If even at an exorbitant price. And I really hope it's not one of the already big tech players out yeah. there because if it is, look out. It's time to unleash your style with custom shirts. Explore endless possibilities with Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin tees. Whether it's for school, jammin business, team, or events, Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Has you covered, literally, for all your custom apparel needs. Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Um, but, um, you know, businesses who... Um, have the ability to let some personality shine and to you know that they're not afraid to show uh, to show personality how long do, how long is a tiktok video you know i mean right yeah i mean i think it, you go to it, it you just have to do it i mean right. you just have to have the philosophy that hey i'm going to jump in and do it you know and and take a few minutes and right. you know i think that it's just one of those things like once you start doing it you realize how easy it is and sure. it's, i mean coming up with the ideas for for business owners you know i mean we have um you know there's clients that we have in the industrial spaces that are doing it. I mean, people are really they're interested in this stuff, you know. And and Absolutely. the algorithm for TikTok is the best. And by algorithm, in case anybody, it's the it's what shows, you know. It's, it's just the best and the worst. It, it is. It's it's how it decides who gets to see what, right? Right. And Google's is now the worst. And as I mentioned, it's it's one of the it's one of the worst we've seen. It's getting worse by the by the day um, because of because I think of profit motives and and Facebook has been absolutely terrible if you're a business advertising on Facebook you, you know uh, you're you're probably you know maybe two percent of the people that are following you see your posts and that's it and so it's you know it's co- becoming hard to do these things yourself TikTok is really the next frontier yeah. and 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 I for anybody that's considering it I'd say jump in while it's hot because you know what's going to happen it's it's grow, um, you know, and then extract, and that's how these, the businesses work, you know. Right. Um, okay, so you saying that to me. So I, let's say I'm, I'm trying to advertise the, the podcast yeah. that we're doing. It. So, and I'm sure this goes for, but I've owned DJ business and, you know, we yeah. drone business, all this stuff. Sure. But to get to people and to have them see your content, because when you're putting it out there on, on the social media side of things, mm-hmm. it is important to be on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Is it important to have be on all of them or should somebody probably the nature of the business right well you know what i would say that if you're doing it for one then it's probably easy to do it for the rest of them and and a lot of times what i'll say is that you know um businesses get vet one of the things i think people don't realize about digital marketing is there's a secret to it is that um now people will um especially um you know mid to younger you know age you know 40 and younger let's say so you know mid millennials to the younger they will do everything they can before they call um, to find out about your business so they're going to look at reviews they're going to look at facebook and and whatever you know facebook if they're older or instagram if they're middle and uh, you know right. so it, it, it breaks down um, but even those are lines are blurred now but so they're going to vet your business right and if they see nothing or if they see like the last post you did was from you know 2020 and it's it's you know kind of a a half-hearted attempt at it, they, they actually will ju- probably judge your business by that. It's almost better to not have something at that point, but, you know, right. that's why I encourage people to keep up with it, even if it's, you know, um, because if you're doing one platform, especially if you're doing video or, you know, if you're just doing some, you know, sharing photos or whatever, um, to just share it across because it's not, you know, you don't have to worry about the sizing or the horizontal or vertical, you know, I mean, right. we worry about that for our clients, but, you know, I would just say that, think of it that way. Like if, if you know, if people are driving, they drive by the front of your business, the, you know, they get home and they're like, I think I might work with them. They're going to look at your profiles and they're going to see what people have to say about you. And then, you know, honestly, the younger people are going to look in, a, you know, search TikTok to find out. Sure. So. And that's funny because a couple of things you said, like you're having something bad out there. Because I always tell people that bad advertising is, is much worse than no oh, yeah. advertising. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have to have the right kind of personality to be. If you're putting out videos, you better make sure that there's at least somebody dynamic on there that is is, is yeah. likable. I would, I guess maybe that's the word. Yeah. Yeah. That they want to actually stay engaged and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Or I mean, or or 
we're not. I mean, there's there's plenty of opportunities also. Like one of the one of the other things we say is be contrarian, right? Like you can stand out by taking a, a you know alternative stand about it, you know, about some things, and uh, or you know. Um, there's just there's just a lot of of you know uh, there's a lot of opportunity to stand out even right. if you feel like everybody else is doing it. All right. Okay. So um, I want to talk about one thing. So when I walked into your office, I saw you have a book over here, uh, Elevated. Elevated marketing. Yeah. So Elevated marketing, I published um, uh, earlier this year. It's it's actually just we haven't done the official launch for it yet, but it's um, it's kind of a, a a passion project I've worked on for. Um, the, the last year, we're going to have to make another version of it, uh, you know, another updated version, which is, you know, not uh, not unheard of in my industry. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's uh, it's it's built, you know, specifically for small businesses. Like I said, you know, it, it's part of that um, small business education that I love. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to get into as many hands as possible because I can't talk to everybody. So, you know, it is available on Amazon if you search uh, Elevated Marketing. Um but you know, um, I I I'm excited that I'm already working on my second one. The, I think the first book is the hardest. You learn the process and you learn the publishing, editing process, and everything, and uh, and how things get laid out. I worked with a great publisher uh, with Fig Factor Media, and uh, and we were able to get it out. And yeah, the um, you know I'm, I'm planning on doing some uh, some marketing for it coming up when there's like the uh, the official launch. But uh, I'll send you home with your copy today, Dave. Awesome. And you can Where are you gonna you, autograph after it for you me too? yeah after you pretend to read it, make sure you tell me <laughs> hey, all you know, kinds of great stuff. <laughs> that's actually something I would read. <laughs> <laughs> I had to read a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, then. Okay. Uh, you know what? My uh, my eight year old yeah. read it cover to cover. Really? Yeah. LJ. He he. Can read I it hire LJ to help me instead of reading it? <laughs> well, I'm not sure he understood everything, but uh, I tell you that really warmed my I, that warmed you know this this old heart here. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> the fact that an eight year old would sit down and read yeah. something that uh-huh. their dad did. It's funny weird. too. For so many years, I told him that I owned a business. He didn't believe me, you know. And I don't, it, finally, he was old enough to realize that you know this is an office, and I am sitting in, you know. <laughs> Right, because I think he thought only like you know, uh, you know, the gilded cage, you know, all these people. But yeah, yes. I wonder what my kids think I do. So <laughs> I could, actually, my seven-year-old the other day asked me. He's like, "Yeah, Dad, you know, you can make money if you went to work." <laughs> I'm like, what do you think I do all day? Man? Yeah, like, because because I don't go to an office and have like yeah. a, you know, I think it's a yeah. corporate kind of thing that they mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. whatever his perception yeah. is of mm-hmm. that. Okay, so uh, I find it funny. So you have elevated marketing book. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're a marketing specialist. Mm-hmm. So how much of your time besides writing writing the book? Because I've tried to help market selling of books. Mm-hmm. So now you get you use your specialty in selling marketing a marketing book. To well, sell the people that are into marketing. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Yeah, no, you know, um, like I said, the publisher does a great job of helping me. Um, uh, one of the things that I'm actually doing um, is so um, in the local area, um, we have a location, that, you know, that we're in right now. And one of the cool things about it is, so I mentioned that I would go travel around and talk to businesses. And I love doing that. And one of the things, you know, people are like, how, how do you, you basically – tell everybody what they need to do. You give away free advice all the time. Like, how do you make money doing that? And the answer is simple. I mean, every small, I think small businesses know immediately, right? I mean, my accountant can tell me exactly what they're going to do for my taxes. And in about the fifth second of them telling me that my eyes are rolling back into my head and I, and I, and I, and I, I stop listening, right. listening. Right. So I'm not an accountant. I don't know what they're doing, but my accountant's awesome. Like, you know, so, um, I think it's more important to tell, tell the concepts of things, you know. Um, so, and if and if business, everything that I talk about, um, it, everything I talk about when I talk, just talk to people in the street or whether I'm doing um, business presentations locally, um, are all you know they're actionable things businesses can do. But hey, neighbors, this is Bill Mock with the Grays Lake Chamber of Commerce, and if you're looking for a network of hardworking, customer focused, and generally friendly local businesses who are dedicated to helping each other succeed, then I'd like to invite you to check out and consider joining our Grays Lake Chamber. We offer our members so many ways to advance their businesses through social networking events, special event sponsorships, informative lunch and learns, and the ever-popular after-hours mixers. Come see why we say we're the new wave of business here in Lake County. Business people are, you know, um, home improvement businesses are 
you know, focused on doing their home improvements and, you know, every type of business is focused on that part of it. And marketing is like accounting in some realms where it's, you know, it, it becomes like something, again, you, you just don't do because it, it's, it, you know, it seems like it's complicated or you don't have time, et cetera. So, um, but I think the, the, the key is, is to know what to do so that if you do hire somebody or even if you know you get somebody in your in your organization to help you with it that that has the time sure you know i i you know what i i i love doing that i love hearing that i love training people i love telling them the the secret killer idea that I, that that can help their particular business so what this is getting to is that you know um we're going to be putting on our schedule so if you go to the loop com, um we we're going to be uh putting in um uh, schedule of local events so we have you know uh in here we can fit about 20 um uh, for presentations so i actually um am sponsored by google to do grow with google events so google has some material that you know i i use in part and then i also you know uh, in, insert my own flavor into it um to talk about you know um Topics ranging from, you know, search engine optimization to YouTube, which is really a popular one that we, we've put on. Um, and I also do virtual events for all the, the score, you know, the, 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 uh, the small business um, uh, and a lot of chambers of commerce as well. So um, as I, I still do as much uh, business education as I can. But um, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get some going in the office here because, um, you know, like I said, uh, I, everybody that I talk to, if I feel like they they just all of a sudden break down, like uh, I'm a therapist, you know, they have all these <laughs> marketing questions that they always wanted to ask, and right. I and I'll sit there as much time as I can give them, I'll I'll tell them I'll answer their questions and everything. So, um, I think you know doing something like that will make the community stronger and the businesses here compete with other communities or you know nationwide, however they need sure. to compete. Now, when you say Google um, sponsors those, I know that you are a – actually, look, from looking over, what does it take to earn your Google Partner badge because the Loop Marketing is yeah. a Google Partner. So, well, um, it, it, there's it, to actually earn the badge, you just have to meet a set of criteria. You have to manage so much dollar value to be a Google Ad Partner. Um, you have to take uh, some tests. And, um, and actually, uh, a few years ago, I was – so I've actually – been flown to the Google headquarters of Mountain View. I've got the tour. Really? It's very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah they uh, they have all the free restaurants. It's you know when I went there, there was like full on games of volleyball going on in the quad. I mean it was really you know um, really neat. <laughs> I mean awesome. the, you know for anybody who hasn't heard, you could it, there was like the mandate that there's always a, a coffee stand within. Um, you know, you, you basically have to peek out your office door and you can see a, a barista, you know, uh, out in your hall, on the hallway, there which is. is awesome, right? Um, but they do that to, to imprison their uh, their workers. So in that way, it's not so cool. But <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, uh yeah. So uh, but I also helped develop one of the tests uh, in, in the downtown Google location. But to be a Google partner, you really just need to meet some of. Uh, uh, some basic criteria, but um, the Grow with Google program is actually their business education program. So that's a different program, and it's uh, it's it's something that they uh, empower certain just a very limited amount of individuals to do to put boots on the ground to again to kind of spread the word. Like I said, um, businesses that have that are scared of marketing, or you know maybe not scared of, but Intimidated, maybe that's a better word. Intimidated sure. by marketing, don't know really how to even get started, haven't owned their business profile from Google, you know, or 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 put themselves on the map, you know. I mean, those are very easy things to do within reach, but you know, um, I think it's just one of those things that people don't know where to get started. So the Google Go with Google program talks about the Google tools and everything, and, right. and it's pretty good. That's cool. What um Looking at these things before we go into the next thing, what what do you say the percentages of small businesses that are are doing things fifty uh, percent right? Um, well, I'm probably in the bottom fifty, so you're not insulting me. Uh, so yeah. the biggest thing, and that's 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 a tough question. Um, that I would say that one of the one of the f- fun quotes about marketing is so data is huge, right? So even if any even people are doing marketing um i would say only the top five percent are actually doing data-driven marketing meaning that they're actually seeing if what they're doing works so That's some right. here's the the fallacy people fall into they're like oh i have a great social media pro- program oh great really what is it, what business is it driving for you well you know the people on my block say that they love my posts oh really well 
I would, that might be great. You might be getting business from it, but also you might be spending a lot of time not getting business from it that you could be using in other ways, right? Absolutely. So one of my favorite sayings is that, um, you know, the, the, the old saying in, in the old yellow pages days, you know, in old Mad Men days even, it was that half my marketing budget's wasted. I just don't know which half, right? Right. But so now, the, yeah, now there's no reason to not know exactly what $1 will bring you in, 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 in your marketing budget and how much revenue it should bring you. Right. Interesting what you said because I had a conversation with one of my friends this morning and he's um, putting out TikTok videos and all mm-hmm. these Instagram reels and everything, and some of them are kind of cutesy. So my conversation with today was, yeah, well you've you've gained 500 followers, but are any of those people buying anything, or are they just see like mm-hmm. I stay stupid ass videos all the time, and I'll yeah. be at emails and be like, hey, I loved your video, but but what what does it bring if they're not buying anything, right? You're just wasting your time. Well, you or know, if it's awareness that you're there. It, there is a, yes, there's an awareness component. You know, there's a brand component. I mean, you know, um, but there's also there is also kind of smart ways to tie some of those things back. Sure. You know, if you mention a coupon or promo code, or if you say you know tell us you found us here, things like that, you can you can circle back and close the loop a little bit, but. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people are spending a lot of time. Um, I, I find that you know, it, uh, people like to boost things on Facebook, which is worthless, by the way, for anybody out there. Please, if anybody, if if <laughs> if this time I've had to sit here with Dave, will teach anybody <laughs> right. to not boost things on Facebook. It does no good. But you know, those are the type of things that people spend money and time doing, and they just they don't measure the impact. But they, it's a it's an ego thing. Like they they see their name out there, and they hear people seeing seeing them, but it sure. doesn't really translate to business. Whereas they haven't, you know, claimed their business profile yet, which means that people just can't search and find them on a map. You know, right. they're a restaurant that doesn't have an online menu or something like that, or you know, um, things like that. I mean, it, right. it's just it, uh, it, it sometimes, and that's where these events are great because in, in we can pinpoint, you know, what the ideal situation is for that business. Sure. You know, and it might be social, but it might not. You know, it might be just, you know, do you have a CRM with an email component and you're not sending regular emails? Email marketing, I love it. You own the audience, um, you know, uh, you can talk to them anytime you want. It doesn't matter what Google's doing in the next year. It doesn't matter if Facebook stops showing, shows your posts to, uh, uh, to people who follow you. You know, you don't have to worry about the price of ads. You just own your email address. You just have to create interesting things to continue to send and give right. people a reason to open them. And it's basically free, whatever the cost of MailChimp or cost of constant contact or whatever. Right. If you're a business owner listening to this right now, hopefully you're as frustrated as I am because I'm listening <laughs> to what you say and I'm really frustrated about like, I have oh, that shit, effect I should on be people. doing I like, love it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what have I been wasting my time on? What What have I been doing all this stuff for? Yeah. And I guess it, it, to every business it's different, but still the same principles mm-hmm. stand. All right, so we're going to take a break here uh, really quick, and I don't know how many uh, shows you've listened to, but uh, right now is when we do the uh, Grace Lake Hot Seat. Okay, great. It's time for the Grace Lake Hot Seat. (laughs) The Grace Lake Hot Seat today is brought to you by Premier Chiropractic. Dr. John, conveniently located in historical downtown Grace Lake. Premier Chiropractic offers you a full range of chiropractic care. John is dedicated to treating people within our community and showing them the benefit of great, convenient, affordable chiropractic care. So if you're looking to get straightened down, go see Dr. John at Premier Chiropractic. Now for the Grizzly Lake Hot Seat. We're going to learn a little bit more about Eli. Okay. All right. Um, I know I say the same stuff all the time, and I say I'm changing these, but I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Um, all right. Uh, if you had to have a theme party at your house, what would it be? Um, well, uh, well, I may, uh, I went to see the Grateful Dead in 1995 at their last show. And, uh, since then I've probably been to a thousand concerts and I'm a big fish fan. So I've been to a hundred of those at least. And they just played at the sphere. Uh, uh, but I, I, it would probably be some kind of uh, concert or jam band themed, um, potentially. Yeah. Nice. I mm-hmm. like it. Um, did you play sport in high school? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I played, uh, uh, I was a, a Frequent bench warmer on the basketball team, and nice. I played a little baseball and football. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I coach locally too. I love it. That's one of my absolute favorite things to do is to coach. What my, age my are you kids. coaching? So, coaching baseball? Yep. Uh, at, uh, I coach ba- uh, baseball the GYBA um, and the uh, uh, third and fourth graders. My son's on, LJ's on the team, and 
So what's that? Is that Mustang? No, that's. Um, it is. Uh, yes, Mustang. Yep. Mustang. Um, and then um, the uh, I'm I'm excited because my uh, my five year old um, is uh, he's uh, or my six year old. Sorry, he just turned six, but um, he is going to be doing t-ball again this year. So um, I, I know that's going to be a totally uh, different experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just uh, have to point him towards the right. And a little painful experience. Yes, I know. As well. Yes, I point just coach t-ball. The... <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So you have to make sure they do sandcastles right, and if they're in the outfield, like which dandelions to pick, which ones. Right. Not. Exactly. There's absolutely no danger of them being hit by fly balls. No. So. It's all about fundamentals <laughs> and, how, and how they're doing things. Yep. But it's fun to watch. Exactly. Progress. I mean, the most important thing is obviously the snacks after the game, right? If well, you yeah. nail that, right, you've done your job. Yeah. I've never been a good snack mom, but the ones that are, they're, oh, like, they're the heroes ones, in our community. Yeah. They make us look bad. They come with those custom bags that are decorated with, that, with the good stuff inside. I mean, I know, I'm like, nothing, I'm lucky if you get like some leftover sun chips. Right. I just bring jars of peanut butter they, <laughs> and sunflower seeds. They don't or peanuts and yeah, for some right? reason that doesn't fly. Get some old cans of soup. You right, know, exactly. figure out what to do with them. <laughs> um, if you had to have a superpower, what would it be? Ooh. Um, well, I actually heard there's a psychological. This is a hot seat. I got to answer these fast, right? Yeah, but, yeah sure, especially. There's fast as you want there's, a, there's actually an interesting psychological study uh, invisibility versus flight so if you if you basically pick one of those yeah. you're a total creep and do you know you how pick, many creeps we've had on the i show? know right so keep asking people that <laughs> but i hope to. they don't answer this so but ask them flight or invisibility because everybody should pick flight if they pick invisibility yeah. there's something weird about them so, so invisibility but having said creeps. that definitely invisibility <laughs> So flight's okay to answer that. I would then. love to be able to. Yeah, I, I travel, so okay, you know, I would right. love to be able to uh, fly my uh, fly my beautiful wife to Paris for dinner tonight, you know, and then that would be great. make it back. A little little cold, we'd have to bundle up, but you know. Yeah, you'd be fine. I'm sure if you could fly, you're probably a little tougher than that anyway. You know, you'd think, but uh, right. Mm-hmm. Here's I'm still laughing about the creepy invisibility. <laughs> people. Um, to, with all of your traveling, um, tell me a place you want to travel that you haven't been. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I. I so I, in 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 the ideal world, I'd love to travel somewhere where I could be completely. And oh gosh, I just I said I would be invisible, but like I would love to be a fly on the wall, let's say, right? Sure. So there's places like I mean I would love to go see what life is like in Iran, just to see, you know. And I would love to go to, you know, uh, to uh, to some some weird places. Um, uh, to just kind of see what life there life is like there. You, you don't know necessarily I mean? want to go there. You just want yeah. to know. Yeah. When I go what it's when like. I go travel places, I don't like do the touristy stuff. You know, I was just in New York a week ago, and my favorite thing to do is just walk around listening to people's conversations because oh, yeah. just you know, I mean, it's just so interesting. You know, I mean, and they go to good restaurants, but I'm not even a foodie. It's just like. You know, so um, but I love I do love traveling and eating food. So, um, but um, you know, uh, probably someplace I haven't been that I would want to go is. Um, uh, you know, I, ha- I haven't been to the uh, to the African subcontinent, so I'd love to go there. I would love to to uh, to check that out. I've you know the safari stuff. I know people who have done that. I have not done that, so that would probably be pretty neat. It'd be really really cool. Yeah. Um, tell me about your first car you ever owned. <laughs> My first car. Um, so it was a 1976 Buick Century. It had like an axe. It looked like somebody just swung an axe into the hood of it. It just had a giant <laughs> hole in it, and I bought it with my own money, or I think maybe my my parents split it with me. It was like, right. But um, but it was it was um, it was 17 feet long, I think, if I recall. It's a and long car. Yes, it's a it boat. was made out of steel, uh, and uh, you know even every even the seats were made out of steel. That's that's in my mind at least. That's what it was. Sure. But, um, I remember one time. So um, it met a, it met its fateful end when um, I was. Uh, oh, and, and one time when I was driving it, the the gas pedal stuck down because the the uh, the cord had frayed, and had stuck. So I was going down an alley, and you know, so this is the safety you know that we were looking at sure. in those days. But uh, I was um, I was enjoying a break from the middle of the day at school, um, as as sometimes. It's a nice way children, to put it. I like children, that. Yes, you know, kids, the break. kids don't do that. But um, yeah, a van turned in front of me, and I nearly split the van in half, hitting it, and I drove away from the scene. So I will say that now it, it wasn't in the best shape, and it had to be put down after that. But Old Bluey was, um, yeah, it was a, it was a. That was the nickname. It was, Old yeah, Bluey. Mm-hmm, it was a, it was a sight to behold. Nice. Okay, speaking of firsts, um, because you are such a music lover, what was your first concert you ever attended? Uh, so my parents took me to Pink Floyd um, in 1989, and at that point I was very young, and all I remember that it was loud, and they had pigs, and there was a bed that flew across the top of the Unidome 
in around Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, wow. but, Imagine um, if people were high there, how cool that would have been. Do you think but people no, were? No, nah. oh, no, probably not. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they had a different kind hey, of Hey, Mom, marketing. what's that smell? Oh, uh, you know, it's uh... a... <laughs> right. So uh, um, Eli was pointing to a poster on the wall behind me. Is that a, a poster that's, for? That's a poster from that tour thereabouts. But, uh, yeah, that's really was, cool. Yeah, that was cool. And I would love to obviously see them, but that's no no chance of that happening. But, no. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, I know a little bit more serious. Uh, what do you wish you learned sooner? What do I wish I'd learned sooner? That's a really good question. Um, uh I don't like to have regrets, so I usually do things. So that um, I know that that's not, that's not a cop out. Um, I think that when it comes to you know here, I, I think for a lot of years, what I tried to do was I tried to make my business into a Fortune 500 company, and I spent a lot of time doing that. And then I realized, you know what? That's not what I want to be. I want to. I want to have. You know, I want to be able to have my clients call me on my cell phone, and not have to. You know, go through several different layers of middle management, et cetera. Um, I, I don't. I know. I, I think it took me a long time to realize that I felt comfortable with not needing to always like just having a business growth for the sake of growth. You know, I mean, I support. You know, um, a, a good group of um, of great employees and uh you know and and i'll and i probably will grow those somewhat but i don't need to have a building with my name downtown on it you know um you know i don't uh, you know uh, i don't need to you know have an ipo to be successful i can enjoy where i'm at as long as i'm doing what i love Right, and the thing that impresses me about your business is because we've actually got to collaborate on some projects, me doing some video with you yeah. uh, for clients, but I really appreciate the way that you have like a real personal connection with these people. Like yeah. when, Even when you and I talk about a mm-hmm. client, um, it's very – it's with respect, and they're, they're, they're like your friends, and you truly want to help them. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's – I love that part of it, of what I do, because, um, I mean, I truly – like. It, it, I've, I've, I've internalized working with every single client. Like we, we do the things for them, and, and I know that's cliche, but I think a lot of small businesses really do feel that way. I mean, yeah. you know, if if somebody's upset about something, I mean that it it really that that's that keeps me up at night, and it, and I always think of ways to not have anything like that happen again, whether it's communication or whatever, because right. that's a lot of times. You know, I found communication and expectation are the biggest things. You know, and as, if you nail that um, in any in anything, I think you've got up. No, I agree. And and back to something you just said too. It's funny that most of my friends that run businesses, they truly love what they do. Yeah. Um. So even if they're not making a boatload of money, they do. It, they take so much pride in it, and that's why those anything negative that ever comes out of it, mm-hmm. you take it to heart and it keeps you up at night. It does. Yeah. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, I probably can't say it. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, well, one of my, one of, I'm very <laughs> famous at Friar Tux in Chicago for, okay. um, for the Tenacious D song, um, oh. something me gently, um, yeah. you know, there's a good one there. Um, but, uh, not for the kids. Uh, that's um, a great karaoke song. It is, even... you know, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, steal it. I, I, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've collaborated on some, some good ones like, uh, Welcome to the Jungle and, uh, and obviously, you know. Uh, I like that. Say you've collaborated. Uh-huh, on, yes, yep, uh-huh. like it's a profession. But um, <laughs> actually, well, the, because of because of my public speaking, I have I have no hesitation. Like if you get me in a karaoke bar, all of a sudden you'll turn around, I'll be gone, and you will hear the weirdest stuff going on. So Which is it, great. Yeah, um, I, there's a lot of good things, like obscure things. Huey Lewis in the news. Um, um, uh, Power of Love is actually one of my. It's I really you know really? It, it really gets. Uh, there's never a dry eye in the house. Wow. Yeah, I look for and uh, shout out to Charlie's that does uh, karaoke. We're recording on a Thursday, so mm-hmm. Thursday night's a uh, karaoke. At Charlie's. Warm it up for me. Yeah. I'll be there. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'll be warming it up. <laughs> He's like, Dave's like, tell me what time you're gonna be there so yeah, I can show exactly. up a half an hour later. That, now we have a video <laughs> promo that will have some value to it that I can use for this, and we will uh, add to our TikTok channel. Yeah. Uh, what's the last thing you bought on Amazon? A uh, bidet. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Dead serious. Oh. Yeah, I actually sat there and waited you uh, for the there. announcement to come so I could get it off my porch before. But now I just set it on a podcast that you know. <laughs> but no, it's uh, yeah. But it's not there I, yet, I, so people, I can go to your porch. People say it's it. the greatest. I it's not even installed yet, but uh, you I just know. don't know which way to sit. Uh, you know, I don't. Yeah. I was in Italy and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not 
really sure about this. <laughs> I thought it was a drinking fountain. Yeah, well, you know, it it, it can be many things, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> many things as you like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times do you exercise per week? Uh, I'm usually pretty good. Um, I, I get a lot of exercise. I get my steps, but uh, actually exercising, I try to get about three, you know, yeah, three times a week. You know. nice. Sunrise or sunset? Oh, I love sunrise. Yeah. Uh, pool or ocean? Ocean. Um, favorite sports team? Oh, uh, well, um, I'm an Iowa Hawkeyes fan. I went to Iowa, um, uh, uh, but um, also an Eagles fan and a Cubs fan, so um, that's a big You get one Chicago one in there anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Uh, last show you binge-watched? Oh, uh, I just finished Fallout. It's pretty decent, you know, yeah. uh, but Shogun. Um, I, I, I I would say I binge-watched it, but it, it comes out. It, like the last one hasn't come out. That's one of the best shows we've watched in a while. Interesting. Yeah. Um, have you ever won an award? Actually, um, over there you can see, yes, we've won several. So we've won, um, uh, well, uh, let me start out by saying I was the second grade runner up in the spelling bee. So, right. you know what? I don't still have my ribbon from that. How'd so. you do at the Pinewood Derby, though? Oh, it was terrible. Dave, why would you say that? I, <laughs> if you would have known I see what the, I went the through. Hurt in his eyes no, you right know now. what? We prepared, we built our car. And it wasn't heavy enough. Did you solder the weights in front? No, we did not. Yeah. And so in this moment, and, and I remember this. I'm telling you, <laughs> I remember where nervous. this was. And I remember <laughs> having, you know, just the, the most hope and, the, and, and the, you know, a young child and, 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 and getting it ready and putting it there and watching it just, and then everybody else would zoom off. And right. it was, Sorry anyways, to bring that up, man. I need a second. And then, <laughs> but no. Um, you say your biggest trauma. <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me oh about wait, it. that's what you asked. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, the awards. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, we won um, uh, several awards. So we uh, so we we won two Marcom awards. One of them was for website design, and one of them was for um, some content marketing that we did. And we won a dot uh, com award, which was for um, another client that was uh, different uh, content marketing. And last year we won uh, the uh, Web Excellence Awards uh, for a website that we designed. So um, wow. these are all national awards. Really, we're really, I'm, you know, I give all the credit to my team um, and 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 you know our clients for um, for you know letting us experiment sometimes and doing some cool stuff. And and yeah, I mean there was a lot of great competition. I mean. The, the we beat out you know we beat out um, well known you know dinner table um, companies uh, for for small clients that we worked with for those so really wow. cool stuff that's yeah. awesome congratulations that's that's nice to see I know awards are awards but when your yeah. hard work pays off yeah they you know they it's pretty cool yeah yeah um, your favorite Grays Lake event to attend. Oh, I like the balloon festival because we know it's going to rain. So <laughs> I know the balloons are not going to take off. Yes. <laughs> right. We just sit and watch them blow up, and it's great for the kids too. Mm-hmm. You know, they do a great, great job with the Christmas tree lighting. Um, I love that. You yeah. know, um, and uh, and Bill Mox, uh, you know, uh, converts his, you know, Santa's uh, Santa's workshop. Um, and, uh, and you know, um, the, it's just, it, it really is like Hallmark downtown, you know, when they light the, I mean, those cheesy Christmas uh, Hallmark shows, which I definitely don't watch ever. No. Never watch those. You never cried to any of them either. Uh, um, no, definitely. Is that the one where the girl gets back with the her old boyfriend? That, but they That's right, distance? yeah. And her yeah. job is like, um, she's she, a weather person. Yeah, I was going to say a writer or something. Right. Or she yeah. works in a company and she's really busy. But right. But she's recently that's gone that through a divorce one. and works at the craft store. Absolutely. Where he yes. Walks and Cameron, Cam- Candace, Bur- Candace yeah. Cameron Bure. Right. Yes. That's it. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad I've never seen any. Right. No, no, no idea what you're talking <laughs> about. No, it's, it, they, it's such a great event down there. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just, you know, um, right, Mike, and it's great for kids. It's great for everybody, you know, so, yeah. yeah. No, we really have a, a lot of really cool things. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We're going to end on the most important one. Um, have you ever eaten a roller dog from a gas station? Uh, no, um, actually I'm vegetarian. So, uh, but I've only been vegetarian since I excuses, uh, excuses. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. How long have you been vegetarian? Um, well, I've been kind of vegan slash vegetarian, uh, for probably five years now. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you had a lot of time to eat roller dogs before that. Yeah. I mean, I cheat every once in a while cause I feel like if I didn't, then I would put too much pressure on myself, you know, <laughs> but, um, um, but I would not cheat with a roller dog. I couldn't even imagine what that would do to myself. No. Well, let's not <laughs> explore. Let's not explore that. No, definitely all. not. Most people have no idea what to do with their aging loved one who needs help. Well, there is a solution, a company that provides care and assistance to make your loved one feel right at home at right at home. 
Their mission statement is to improve the quality of life for those they serve. They offer extensive services, personal and companion care, safety supervision and transportation, fall prevention, dressing and bathing assistance, medical reminders, meal prep, hospice support, ambulation support, stroke recovery, Parkinson support. The list goes on and on and on. If you have an aging loved one that needs help, call right at home. Most people prefer to age in their home rather than moving to an assisted living or nursing home. Right at home can make this happen. Contact Right at Home at rightathomenlc.com or give them a call, 847-984-0103. Now back to the show. Um, okay, so um, as we're getting towards the end, we, you and I had a little conversation about um, some online um, privacy yeah. things and how it's a little conflicting to your business. So maybe give some people some advice on maybe some tips that would be helpful for people what to do, what not to do, things to watch out for, yeah, especially for their children. That, and that's, you know, being a parent. And so I actually, and I tell people that I don't do social media myself and they, they what, why, you, you know, um, it's because I know too much about it. Right. So, um, I know um, what basically is, you know, people say they use Facebook and they use TikTok, but in the end, they are actually the product. Um, and that's what, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? So um, in, in using Google, too, I mean, these companies are using you as the target for advertising sales. And, you know, I think if people think about it, they get that, right? But what they don't know is really... Um, you know, how much these companies, so there's, there's just, there's a few companies that are running it, profit driven companies, and they, they really, they, they, they deal in data information, data information, data, um, and big data, big data being, you know, literally knowing, you know, 60 data points on every single human in, in the U S is it's, it's, it's projected to be this year, bigger business dollar wise than oil. So it's, it is, it is huge. So you got to think of all these companies that are trading in information. And when I think about my kids, which ones are the most valuable for these companies to own data on? It's the ones that they can have the longest data lifespan on. They don't Absolutely. want, you know, they can they can have all the data they want on me, but what they really are looking for. And so there's insidious ways that companies are are doing that. I mean, everybody that you know signing up for, you know, I mean, not I don't think anybody younger would sign up for a Facebook account, account now, but you know, from Instagram or for um, for even TikTok, you know, um, for all that people say about China owning TikTok's data, you know, it doesn't matter who owns it. I mean, it, it really, at the end of the day, it's it, everybody owns everything about you or your children and what they do with that, really, you have zero visibility or knowledge about, right? So, um, you know, uh, they're, uh, you know, they could be marketing um, things that you don't want your child to see. They could be, um, you know, even, even things as, as, um, as silly as like Fortnite, which, you know, is, is, is a fun game. You know, I play with, with, uh, with my son, but I mean, you know, they, you you sign up for an account and that, I mean, that if you read through the, you know, the really long terms and conditions, it says they can do whatever they want with your data. You can say when you're playing and, you know, when you're buying things and all that kind of stuff and they can ship it out. So, you know, um, I guess everybody just needs to have a realistic, you know, look at that and say, you know, uh, at one point is what I'm getting for free worth, um, you know, and, and, if, and if that's the deal you've made and you're fine with it, that's great. You know, but just make, you know, I would just caution everybody, you know, with their children and everything, too. You know, for me, I know. One of the concerns that I have, this is going to be, this is one of the reasons I'm writing the book, right? I'm writing about what's happening next. And, you know, with social media and the way that, you know, um, they're steering people, it, and TikTok is actually, despite being good, it's also very bad at giving uh, people, you know, um, image consciousness. And, you know, we know that, you know, people that are getting, you know, children that are getting into the the teens, you know, I mean, they're looking at very unrealistic uh uh, images of everybody else, you know, and even, even, you know, um, if, you know, you look at somebody's Facebook profile, if you're my age and they're, you see them, they're constantly, or their Instagram and they're out there, you know, their family's at the beach and their family's smiling in this. And then you're, you know, you, you turn around and your kids are, you know, ripping the curtains off the wall and, you know, and, you know, well, they don't post the bad stuff that nobody posts the bad stuff, but everybody right. looks and sees that everybody else is posting the good stuff. And it makes you think, what, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I'm sure that as soon as they took that photo, you know, something terrible happened, you know, and right. it was like the one side, I mean, that's what we do. You know, when I used to be on social media, you get that one second where everything's perfect and that's what everybody posts, but reality's not that way. 
way. And I think that if, as long as people are also heads up about that, you know, but kids don't get that. I mean, they see, I mean, when I, I mean, when I was a, we didn't have social media, there's a pressure when I was in high school. And I mean, I know that you're only, right. you're only 25, so you probably don't know, right? Or, yeah, no, that, I don't right? know anything but, about that. Yeah. No, but uh, I mean, you imagine like not being invited to a party and then literally seeing it unfold online yeah. while you're in high school. I mean, the stuff like that, I mean, cause I just couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So. I was walking downtown uh, Libertyville the other day, and I saw a couple walking, and they weren't happy. They were just walking like like stone faced, and then they stop in front of their favorite place or something. They smile, they take their picture, probably post it, mm-hmm. and then probably continue yeah. their argument walking down the street. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so exactly. that's what we get to see. Okay, yeah. if as as a parent, is there one of these sites that my kids should not be on? I don't. I I is you know I, I I I'll just say for my kids. Um, it's going to be a fight, but I don't want them, and I don't want to be like that parent, you know. I, I let them do a lot of things, but I really, really don't. I, I don't want them to have phones until the very last possible second, even if it means they can't. They need to call me to pick me up from sports and anything because I've seen, you know, I've seen kids that are my my son's age eight like they have cell phones and they're just sitting there you know it's a beautiful day outside and i mean again this is just me but you know i i think that kids need to and and this is it's everything you know i mean it's you know i think kids need to be bored sometimes absolutely the thing about creative when they're bored exactly the thing about social media is it will never let you get bored it's literally programmed to keep you looking at it no matter what and not make you bored. I mean, I know people that have to like have interventions about TikTok because they they'll open it up, at, you know, to go to bed, and go then all of a sudden hole. it'll be three in the morning. You know, right. I mean, and they they don't know what's happened, and that's what it's designed to do. Right. Great book called uh, Ten Reasons to Delete Your Social Media Accounts. Now, um, I forget the author, but it's over there uh, in my library. But it's really good and interesting. And if you read it, you probably will think twice about any platform that wants to. You know, that so, you kids to be on. so when you're saying that to me, I think first thing that, you know, I've always said, I, I don't want to be on here. I'm only going to post pictures of me like on the job or anything to, mm-hmm. to make sure that people know what you do because people are on it. Yeah. Um, so you're a marketing guy and you're, I know. you do social media marketing and you're telling me that I shouldn't be on there. Uh, you know, I know too much about it. Like, and I said, you know, I know, I know what it can do. And I know that the reason why it's so good for, you know, for when, you know, the reason why that I can go in and buy ads if I want, you know, for a client is because they have people trapped in, in this, in this viewing. And, and it also, there's a lot of other reasons. I mean, there's, you know, there's four companies that are running everything, you know, and anytime that happens and that, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, it really is. Um, so I'm, ex- I'm excited about what's next though, because what know, is next? You keep saying about what you're excited about what's next. Yeah. So um, the bottom will fall out. I mean, like, um, so, you know, it, it's almost impossible to think of Google not being the place where everybody goes to Google something, but we already see it, and it, it's partially because Google is is over. They're trying to over monetize now. There used to be, you know, the theory of Google was do no evil, that was gone in 2015. Um, they very much are doing evil things. They're making search worse so that they can sell more ads now, which was never the case before. And that's why I always looked up to them. I mean, like I said, I was at their, you know, at their at their headquarters. I helped with their their ads tests and everything. But now I can I can see that they're just not it, it is they've finally given into it. Facebook did it years ago. They sold out Facebook and Meta years ago. That company is one hundred percent evil. Although I ha- I have to use them to to as a as a platform because they, you know, that's what I do. It it is it is very schizophrenic, but I think it is because I know so much about how it works. I mean, if I want to target, you know, um uh, if I want to target people that own a house and have kids and have been married since 2016 and, you know, uh, own a dog and uh you know, um I can literally create that audience and I can target them specifically, you know, with whatever that I want. Right. Um, and it, but the, anybody can too. So sure. Presidential yeah. campaigns. Uh, um, that's a know, whole other rabbit hole. Other countries. Right. <laughs> you know, you you can right. see where it all goes. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times when people say, "Well, Dave, you shouldn't be on there because you know they're stealing all your information," I'm like, "Who cares about me? Yeah. Like, what does it matter if I'm on there? I don't care if they're tracking my phone or if they're uh, yeah." 
I mean, it's it's a it's an ex, it's an exchange. It's a it's a transaction. You're giving your information in order for something for free. You know, if right. that's good for you, then you know. I mean, uh, I, if you don't care what the, if they you know if uh, if they anonymously see what you search and they can target you, then go for it. Just know that you know other people can use that information to target you, and right. you know it's not or your kids. So it's not always the the best situation, but. You know, with what the other thing is AI, right? So everybody's AI, 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 and every, you know, I, I don't think I, to me, it, it hasn't done anything cool yet. It, you know, it, it's done a lot of things cool, but it, it at at what point is AI going to start reading other AI articles in order to build its own AI? And we're going to, you know, there's there's a name for that, you know, but it's basically it's it's consuming its own information, and at some point, you know, it's like there's going to be there's and that's another reason why Google is getting so bad. You know, um, it, 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 there's something big is going to happen. I think the, you know, the blockchain is a way if, if what happens, not, not crypto, but the blockchain specifically, um, it could allow creators in the future. It, it, it just by its very nature, it, it actually could allow it so that no big companies own creative items. So like an NFT, right. is like a, it's its own thing. But if you have a podcast, you don't need a publishing venue. You just publish it. And I know that's a it, there's a deeper concept to sure. it, but you don't have to have anybody. And you could you you know you could publish in any format that people can consume, and it doesn't need to be on YouTube. You know, right? It can just it just is, and and that's what I see happening in the next five years. Which I hope that's the case. It'll be great for creative professionals who have really struggled. You know, and they're getting their stuff taken by AI right now, you know? Right. And so, yeah, the one AI question I always have is not, not everybody's like, what does oh, it stand scared. For? Um, <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> what does AI stand for? <laughs> that maybe that should be a hot seat question. <laughs> um, I was writing something and I said, all right, well, you know, you get all these ads like, oh, you write your own book, whatever. So let's say I tell it, Hey, I want you to write me a, uh, rap song about, mm-hmm. um, Rocky Balboa going to the, joining the YMCA. So that comes out, it spits it out for me mm-hmm. through a chat GPT, whatever. I get it and I publish that. Is that copyright infringement? Who who owns that information? Well, I mean, that's they're they're struggling with that, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, the New York Times sued and and they uh, and and Reddit drew a line in the sand and said you cannot use it unless you pay us, and they pay they paid like sixty million dollars or something like that. Google paid Reddit in order to read like Reddit from the beginning of time back to train really? their AI. Yeah. So publishers, I think um, there's, you know, publishers, you know, um, and Reuters did did something similar because news items that, you know, they want to train that on AI. But uh, so there is there is some, but like if you run a blog, you I mean, you're not a major publisher. You, you've already had your stuff stolen. You know, I mean, forget about it. Um, everything that's been on Medium, you know, Medium, the mm-hmm. the blog content, yep. it's it's well known that AI has scraped the entire front to back of that, and those are all people who are they run specifically on Medium to be to mon- you know, to to have a good publishing platform. Every idea that they've ever had on Medium is incorporated into AI answers for anything right now, and I think those people deserve something for that. And, Absolutely. You know, that's where I, I'm saying like the create. I mean. You can go um, have a logo created by Microsoft Copilot right now if you wanted to. It's not great, but it'll give you something. I mean, that doesn't replace sitting down with a graphic designer and going through an idea, you yeah. know, and and uh, and it doesn't replace great like thought leadership content. Right. Yeah, because people worry about that taking over, but really, you know, they, everybody says there's no original ideas anymore. They're just, you know, yeah. off takes on, on any other idea. And then you throw AI in there to mm-hmm. help out with all these ideas. Like I can read stuff. It's fun. I'm sure you yeah. do too. You read somebody's web page and you're mm-hmm. like, oh shit, really? Yeah. Like you didn't write that. There was, an, there was somebody that was brought in as a consultant for uh, digital marketing and it happened to be a client that, or, or a friend of a client and they, they said, you know, can you check this guy out? You know, and I looked at, at his own website and his own website, there, you can actually run things through. There's a couple of programs that will identify the oh, probability. Really? 99% probability, everything on his website was AI. And even his images, if you look closely, you know, it's like people raising their hands in the air, and but then they're turning into scissors, and there's two heads. And 
So, you know, even the images, right? So, right. you know, it's not perfect yet. But, I mean, I just want you, everybody to think, like, if you're writing blogs with AI right now in order to try to get on Google and, and everybody else can, is that going to be rewarded? Probably not, you know. Okay. So, so that's not a, that's not a great strategy. No, we we're big fans of thought leadership. I mean, you know, come up with a survey, um, come up with a unique take. It goes back to what we were saying, being a little contrarian. Come up with something unique to say, right? That that nobody else is. AI will never be able to replace. You know, um, well, again, to my AI overlords, to wrap it up. Yes, uh, it, thank you again for everything. Yes, you've we done. appreciate everything. But it, as of right now, they but won't be able on. to replace the right. interesting human element that is unique thought and uh, and 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 new frontiers. Right. Yeah. Well, we could talk about AI all day um, because of our our time right now. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to make sure that um, Grace Lake needs to know about the Loop Marketing, about you, about other any other services maybe that you know who should who should walk in your door to say. You know, they yeah. need help. Well, you know, I think it all starts. Just take a look at if you're a small business. Just take a look at, you know, um, I mean, just be honest. Do you feel comfortable with where you're at, and do you feel comfortable that, you know, with what you're doing, that if your competitor overnight started to lean into um, digital marketing, would you feel, you know, um, and that that's what that's what will happen. I mean, it, it's. Um, we're in an area where I think there's been a lot of um, a lot of businesses who uh, have been content to just keep, you know, lean on their website from 2006, and they think it's enough information that's on there. Um, but what will happen, and it's almost certain, is that you know there will be competition. The competition will be more sophisticated, and and it's not a zero sum game. I mean, it is they will take your customers and clients by doing better in that realm so you know that's where and i'm not even saying working with the loop marketing i'm just saying be cognizant of the fact that it you know um it, it is something where if, if people will realize if you have an old website they'll think you're an old company sure um if you are not out there you know then you know if you're not out there digitally you know, people are walking into businesses less, you know, um, you know, a lot of people, places don't have storefronts anymore. You know, you, you just visibility is key at the very least, you know, yeah. and then messaging comes next. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, starting with just the website, um, if you look at what you, where you're at and if you have any concerns whatsoever, it's probably a big red flag. Right. Yeah. Cause people, yeah, everybody, I always say you don't have to be the best at everything, but you have to be better than everybody around you. Right. Yeah. Or I mean, it's just a, yeah. To stay, it's stay the, one step ahead. One the, step ahead as much as you possibly can. The two people in the forest, you know, that come upon the bear and uh, right, uh, <laughs> they both run away. And <laughs> the one says, uh, "You're not running very fast." He's like, "That's okay. I just have to run faster than you." Right? Exactly. <laughs> no. Nope. In a lot of ways, that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to thank you um, very much. So, Grace Lake, um, thank you guys for listening. Um, if you don't know Eli, make sure if you see him around, he's always down. Yep. He's here at the office. A beautiful space, by the way. Great. Come to, uh, uh, for anybody listening, you know, check out our site, loomarketing.com. Um, soon we'll have events up there, um, and uh, we'd love to see you. Um, they'll always be free, and uh, they'll always be interesting. Nice. Well, and some that. some I might have booze at. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, I, either you, you run the event, I'll bring the booze because <laughs> there's good. a lot of things to be learned. That, that's for sure. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Grays Lake, wherever you're listening, do me a favor. Um, uh, now everything in my head is thinking about digital content strategies, <laughs> but uh, it's very important that you subscribe on your listening platform. Yes. Um, whether you're on Apple, whether you're on Spotify, whether you're on YouTube, please um, subscribe because it's kind of cool to watch your phone light up on a on a Tuesday and saying, hey, there's a new Crazy Lake episode um, from maybe somebody you know, maybe somebody you don't know. So I think by building community, it's very important to know the people that we're surrounded by, maybe some other business services um, and the people that actually shape our community. So uh, make sure to subscribe there. And I'll leave this uh, once again, as I always do, is make sure to get out there today. Uh, do one simple random act of kindness. We never know what people are going through. We have all this bullshit to worry about from AI and our kids on these other things. So maybe you can lead by example and share your kids how important it is just to make somebody smile today. So we never know what our, our, our friends are going through. So be nice, seriously. And thank you, Grizzly, for listening. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday, everybody.